I'm Alan Kenny, Editorial Director with REIT.com, and we're in New York for REIT Week 2014 Near REIT's Investor Forum at the Waldorf Astoria Hotel. Joining me is Stephen Marks, Managing Director with Fitch Ratings. So Stephen, I want to start off just kind of a general question. Are there any sectors that you feel like are doing a better job managing their balance sheets, or is that something that's more of a kind of case-by-case -case basis? For us, it's, it's kind of both. It is case-by-case, -case, but what we've noticed sector-wide is that Virtually every REIT, regardless of asset class or property type, has been very proactive in managing their balance sheets, namely reducing leverage, making sure there's good access to capital and strong liquidity. In particular, you look at some of the multifamily REITs over the last three or four years have actively been becoming unsecured bond issuers. Heretofore, they had primarily, some of them had primarily been somewhat reliant upon the GSEs in terms of secured mortgage capital, and they've done, done a fairly good job in, in delevering their balance sheets and also obtaining access to unsecured, unsecured debt capital to reduce some of the reliance on the GSEs. And I know that Fitch Range just published your mid-year outlook for the REIT space. Give us an idea what uh, some of the big conclusions were. Yeah, yeah, we did just publish our mid-year outlook for the remainder of 014, and, and it's driven by a lot of the things that we were just mentioning regarding proactive balance sheet management. Companies are doing a good job in managing their balance sheets. We expect that they will have good access to capital, good liquidity. We also expect fundamentals for the most part in virtually every sector to be, to be strong. Uh, strong to, to, in some cases, very strong. And so fundamentals good, uh, access to capital good, liquidity good. Some of the things that we're a little bit more concerned about are, are increased development exposure, particularly some spec development. And there might be a risk of, of potentially more stock buybacks in the future for the rest of the year. And give us one trend that you'll be watching really closely in the REIT market for the next six months. Well, I think in some ways it's a lot that, that we just mentioned in terms of the outlook. We, th we think that Stock buybacks could become a, a greater, uh, a more important way for companies to try to bridge the gap between uh, some of their NAV discounts. And so we're seeing, uh, you know, to what extent that buybacks have on implications on liquidity and leverage. We don't see this being a widespread theme generally across the sector. We do think it will be issuer by issuer, but it's something that, that companies, particularly as, as acquisition volumes are likely to slow and it will be more difficult for companies to grow their FFO per share absent same store NOI growth a way to, to kind of boost boost earnings and FFO per share it, you know, could be via stock buyback. So it's something that, that we don't view as a, as a huge negative in the sector per se, but it's something that we're definitely paying more attention to. All right, well thank you so much for your time, Stephen. Yep, thank you, Alan. And for more on this and other REIT news and analysis, be sure to visit REIT.com.